Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Mrs. Troubleshoot and today we're gonna go over free placement in a little bit more detail. I've gotten this request so many times that I'm glad to finally bring you this video. Uh, so first you want to start out by using the bb.moveobjectsoncheat. And once you type that cheat code in, you should get this message signifying that the cheat has been turned on. From this point, you can start free placing objects. So, um, one of the main questions I get on my videos is how I place certain items on surfaces how I'd like to. And what you want to do is start off by placing a bunch of the item, like a, like a a lot of them to the point where the item suddenly starts on the ground that's how you'll know it's ready to be placed wherever you want it and then you'll want to raise it up by holding down and then you want to switch to free placement mode so that it's moving freely and then you want to hold down L2 and R2 and press up to raise it up and then once you have it where you want go back into free placement mode and place it exactly where you want I like to place my paper towels on the corner of the sink in the kitchen I'm just trying to show you a close-up of how I place that and if you find out you don't like where you placed it originally you can place another one right there in that corner and then you want to delete all of the paper towels or items that are not in the corner and there you have your paper towel exactly in the corner where you want it your sim can still use the sink just fine now let's say oh I don't like this position I want to move the paper towel it's best to undo 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 until all of the items are back and then grab the item that you want to place and place it again because if you try to move the item without undoing it's gonna start snapping to the grid and you don't want to do that and you'll lose that ability to use free placement so I'm doing the same thing here with the soap dispenser Putting a bunch of them there until one of them snaps to the ground, raise it up, use free placement to place it exactly where I want, and delete all of the other soap dispensers. Again, you do not want to move an item once it has been placed this way because it will snap to the grid and you'll lose the all ability to use free placement. You know what I'm talking about where it forces you to put items in a really awkward position on surfaces so in this case I wanted to put this spoon holder in the in between the microwave and the sink so what did I do I placed a bunch of them first and then I used free placement as soon as it snapped to the ground and then rose it up into place so when I originally started putting these here on the sink I thought that since the arrow was pointing towards the sink when I told her to use the sink she was saying that she couldn't because the arrow was facing the sink and so I recorded myself turning the bottle around the other way so that she could use the sink um, I later found out that when I moved the counter she was telling me she couldn't use the sink because there was a bottle under the counter so it doesn't matter if the arrow is facing the sink or not, your, sh your sim should still be able to use the sink. So please disregard that. So let's say you just placed an item and you don't like where it is, but you don't feel like bringing back all of its copies to try and move it again. You could just move the surface or counter that the item is on and it'll float in midair. That way you can move it using replacement exactly where you want it to be and then you move the counter back and the item will be placed exactly where you need it. So another free placement method is to place an item on the ground directly below a coffee table like this and wait for the grid to go away 
like I'm doing with these books. So the grid goes away. Now I can use free placement and just raise it up. It's so weird. Like it lets you do it for some reason as long as you wait for the grid to just go away. And there doesn't seem to be a limit to how many items you can fit on a coffee table using this method. So I think it's really useful. I actually just learned it while I was trying to film this video. Um, I'm doing a similar thing with these plants. I'm just kind of trying to show you how you can completely change the design of a piece of furniture. Now what you don't want to do is make it so that the surface is exposed through the object. You always want to raise it high enough so that you can't see whatever object you've placed it on like that. Now maybe you won't like that type of design because the pot is showing at the bottom of the coffee table, but for other coffee tables like this one, you can get away with doing that. Now you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing here, I'm just using this as an example for you to encourage you to use your imagination when you're building homes for your sims. Don't be afraid to make some plants with some surfaces or whatever you want to mix together to make something cool. Okay, so now we're going to use the same technique as before for the coffee table and living room. I think it really depends on the object size and the surface you're putting it on. Say if this was a tissue box, there wouldn't be as much difficulty placing it. The more difficult it is to place an item, the more of the item that you'll have to place. Remember that. If it's hard to get the item to place without snapping it to the grid, just keep putting a bunch of them until it does. And then delete all the extras. It was relatively easy placing all of these objects in here. Um, the grids weren't too restrictive, so it was a bit easier to place these. But if you're having some difficulty placing these items, just don't give up. Use the techniques I've taught you here to get your items placed. Um, these are actually two statues that I use as bookends for these books. I love to have clutter in my builds and this is a great way to achieve that. And the bed still works. She can nap and sleep in it just like normal. Now another thing I get asked about a lot is mirror placement. Now as you can see, mirrors move one or two ways, up and down or right and left. Sometimes it's hard getting a mirror exactly placed where you want it. So for instance, this mirror can't move any lower. So to fix that, I remove the wall and then I place the mirror and then I put the wall back. Make sure you pay attention to this step very closely because in this case I did not put the wall, the mirror exactly on the wall so I had to start over. And again you'll just want to delete that wall and then carefully place the mirror. Make sure you utilize your camera angles here so you know exactly where you're going to place it. That one looks like it's on the wall this time, and it's a bit lower than a normal sims mirror will allow you to go. Doing the same thing with this mirror here, say I want it a little lower. The, the height that the mirror defaults to in game usually isn't good enough for me, so I just want it to be a little lower. Make sure you're watching those textures and they're not mixing together because that's... Uh, That'll make your game look a little wonky and you'll get a lot of like flickering, like textures flickering because they're combating each other. And there we go, mirror is moved much lower than it would be if I hadn't used this technique. Make sure you don't try to grab and adjust the mirror after you've placed it because it will snap to the grid which will undo all of the work you just did. So if you need to move the mirror, if you don't like where you've placed it, after all, um, remove the wall first and then move the mirror around so that you can get a better place. 
And finally, we're moving on to the medicine cabinet. Uh, I like to use this as an example because the game actually defaults this mirror way too high for my liking. So again, I remove the wall, place the mirror, put the wall back, and that is a much more realistic height in my opinion. And I just went ahead and undid that to show you a comparison of the two. Yeah, that one looks way better, much more realistic. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. Thank you so much if you made it here to the end. Here are some screenshots, just give you an idea of what it would look like once everything has been completed. Uh, and, and a dynamic shot of the sink being broken in the bathroom. I really hope that this video helped you understand how to place objects exactly where you need them to be. And I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.